Okay, thank you. So to formally open our uh, activity this morning, we'd like to call uh, Dr. Flaviana Hilario, our Deputy Administrator for Research and Devel Development, to give the opening remarks. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Um, on behalf of our administrator, Dr. Vicente Malano, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to this 101 Climate Outlook Forum. So, if some of you have attended our 100 uh, out, uh, Climate out Outlook Forum, which was held in Hive Hotel, um, medyo bongga yung ating uh, celebration during that time kasi 100, uh, um, uh, uh, 100 Climate Outlook Forum po tayo. And uh, we have a sponsor during that time, the World Food Program, wherein uh, Pag-asa has now an ongoing project on a uh, uh, seasonal climate forecasting. Um, let me also acknowledge some of our friends. Of course, our uh, former colleague, si Mang Tani Narian. <laughs> Palakapakan na naman ang si Mang Tani. Pagagaling lang yata sa bakasyon. <laughs> and uh, our uh, uh, chief of the climatology and agrometeorology division, si Miss Edna Wanilio, palakpan po natin. Um, of course, ang ating uh, mga taga climatology and agrometeorology division, especially ang ating mga claims, taga claims, pero meron ding ibang sections um, for this uh, who have been um, uh, doing a good job in this uh, conduct, uh, conducting the uh, Climate Outlook Forum. Uh, although uh, ang, the title is Climate Outlook Forum, uh, we also have our other divisions like the uh, Weather Division who provide us with the weather update and of course our Hydromet Division who provides us with some information on the updates of the dam uh, situation in mostly in Luzon area. Um, since we are now ending at the end of April, I'm sure that many of us would like to know um, what is our forecast regarding the onset of the rainy season in the type 1 climate. So it's very important we always emphasize that the onset of uh, the rainy season that we uh, forecast or uh, we announce is uh, for the type 1 climate or the areas mostly in the western part of the country. So I'm sure that this will be discussed later. And of course, yung forecast po natin for the next six months. Um, I think um, just last uh, week when we uh, there was the um, conduct of the NAS, the uh, third national RND conference which was held in PICC one of the reporters actually asked me whether there is a forecast of an El Nino during the later part of the year so again uh, I will not preempt the this the presentation later on so we will know whether um, there is a forecast of an El Nino um, but for sure we are now have a weakening La Nina almost uh, I think uh, ending La Nina and after that uh, the forecast is a neutral uh, conditions in the central and eastern equatorial Pacific. Okay, so uh, with that, again, magandang umaga po sa, sa ating lahat at maraming maraming salamat at hindi kayo nagsasawang dumalo dito sa ating National Climate Outlook Forum.
Thank you, Ma'am Flavi. Uh, but before we give the presentations this morning, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our uh, ever loyal na mga, mga clients. So please acknowledge once your uh, affi uh, your uh, affiliation is called. Okay, first is the Sugar Regulatory Administration. Okay, thank you, sir. The UN OCHA. Uh, morning. Thank you, sir. Of course, uh, Jimmy, in the person of <laughs> Mang Tani. Welcome back, sir. Na miss ka namin sa COF 100. And the Department of Public Works and Highways, uh, FCMC. Thank you. Uh, the National Power Corporation. Thank you, sir. Uh, Accord. Thank you. Transco. Uh, thank you, ma'am. The Office of Civil Defense. Thank you. NIA, or the National Irrigation Administration. Meralco. Thank you, sir. Land Bank. Thank you. The Aldis Incorporated. Thank you, sir. National Food Authority. Thank you. Philippine Air Force. Thank you, sir. The QCDRRMO. Thank you. Uh, PCA Region 4B. Thank you. Philippine Sugar Millers Association. Thank you, sir. AMIA. This A A A M I A oh, okay, thank you. Okay, ma'am, thank you. O L O M L Center. Thank you, sir. Uh, wala na bang yung na miss na. And our, of course, our the presence of our executive staff. Ano kita ko si Ma'am Cynthia Celebre, our chief for the R N R D T D. And of course, our Pagasa colleagues from the other divisions, uh, thank you for coming. So now, we would like to call uh, Mr. Juanito Galang or June Galang, the Senior Weather Specialist from the Weather Division, to give us the weather update. So, June. Good morning. Good morning sa ating lahat. Ayun po, bibigay ko lang po yung brief weather update po natin tsaka yung extended weather outlook hanggang ang ginawa ko po yung hanggang May 1 lang uh, next week. Ayun po, mapapansin natin yung umiiral sa atin na weather system ngayon itong Easter list. Kaya sa umaga, napakainit po natin halos maaliwalas yung buong bansa. Kung makikita po natin itong Luzon, Visayas, tsaka Malaking part din ng Mindanao, apektado ng Easter Lease. Normally po, sa umaga, napaka-alinsangan. Pero ang epekto po nito, yung mga afternoon development ng mga thunderstorm. At mapapansin din po natin sa bandang ibaba, sa may south ng Mindanao, unti-unti po, umaangat na rin itong tinatawag natin intertropical convergence zone. Although sa mga, may mga rainfall na observed na, almost every day dito sa some parts ng southern part ng Mindanao na pwede natin i-associate dito nga sa flaring itong intertropical convergence zone. So para sa uh, numerical weather output natin for tonight, kung mapapansin po natin yung mga yung concentration po ng mga maximum na paulan Andito sa part ng Mindanao, yung nabanggit ko nga po kanina, pwede nga associate sa intertropical convergence zone, yung flaring niya. At dito po mapapansin natin yung western side nitong Luzon, itong Ilocos region, nakakaroon ng konting development ng mga maximum rainfall. Next slide. Tapos mapapansin po natin sa umaga, halos nagkiklear po yan. Halos wala pong ulan o wala pong kaulapan na bubo. Pero pagdating ng gabi, next slide, ayun na naman po, nabubuo na naman po yung mga thunderstorm. Particularly, ito pong Ilocos region, uh, sa part po nitong Sambales area, umaabot din po dyan. Pero kung kapansin-pansin po, itong sa part ng Sambuanga Peninsula, ARMM, Sok Sargen, tsaka itong bandang Northern Mindanao, yung malakas na paulan, 
Alos nag-aakar paggabi. Tapos mapapansin din po itong western uh, side ng Visayas, unti-unti po nagkakaroon na rin po tayo ng mga pag-ulan. Ganito po mangyari hanggang Sunday morning, Sunday evening, halos yung concentration po uh, sa gabi nangyayari mga paulan. Hanggang May 1 po, ganyan ang alas sa uh, na mamonitor natin. Pero mapapansin po natin, mayroong mga circulation dito po sa bandang ibaba. Possible low pressure area, pero pwedeng part lang din yan ng intertropical convergence zone. Kaya unti-unting nagpo-propagate pataas na. Okay. Hanggang May 1, halos ganun po yung forecast natin mga afternoon tsaka evening thunderstorm. So yung na-expect po natin itong Metro Manila, rest of the country, asahan na po natin yung mga afternoon tsaka evening rain shower tsaka thunderstorm. Pero particular po yan nangyayari dito sa May Mindanao, ito sa Buanga Peninsula, yung nabanggit ko kanina, Sox Sargent, ARMM, Northern Mindanao, tsaka ito pong Ilocos region. Uh, yun pong mga areas na yon ang malaking chance na magkaroon ng mga evening o afternoon o evening thunderstorm. Pwede pong mayayari yan hanggang May 1, yung ano natin. Tapos, wala po tayong PC na in-expect this weekend. Maraming salamat po. Uh, thank you, Sir Jun. So, kung may mga tanong kayo mamaya, uh, i-reserve niya para sa, uh, sa open forum. Uh, may isa pa lang tayong dumating na, ano, from the PIA. Please acknowledge. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, papunta na tayo sa status ng dams. To give us the status of dams in Luzon, we'd like to call Ms. Eileen Abelardo, our hydrologist from the Hydromet Division. Um, good morning po sa ating lahat. At didiscuss ko po ngayon kung ano po yung status ng uh, major dams po natin dito po sa Luzon. So, for Angat po, ang elevation niya po ngayon ay 196.56 um, meter and mataas po siya sa roll curve natin. So, expect po natin na normal pa yun pong um, uh, activities dito sa Angat Dam po natin. And sa San Roque naman po, ang elevation niya ngayon is 244.01 and mataas din po siya sa roll curve and uh, mababa din naman siya dun sa uh, kanyang normal high water level na 280. And then kung mapapansin po natin, um, yung trend po niya is um, sumasabel lang po yung mga uh, past years uh, trend po niya. So sa pantabangan naman po, ang elevation niya ngayon ay 182.22 and mababa po siya sa kanya pong root curve pero um, gan pa man at tuloy-tuloy uh, pa rin po yung operation dito po sa Pantabangan Dam. And for the Magat Dam, ang um, elevation niya po ngayon is 186.25 and mataas din po siya sa kanyang roll curve at bahagya pong tumaas ng uh, 6 uh, centimeter from dun sa elevation niya kahapon. So sa iba naman pong dams dito sa Luzon, Ipo, kaninang, kaninang 6 a.m. din po is 101.2. And sa Lamesa naman po, um, 73.91, kung uh, mapapansin po natin, mababa po yung elevation niya ngayon. And then, ang Buklaw, 744.15. At sabi nga naman po, tumaas po siya ng uh, 56 centimeter um, kaninang 6 a.m. at naging 571.43. Uh, and... Kung mapapansin po natin, halos lahat naman po ng uh, dump, uh, elevation ng dams po natin ay mataas po sa kanila pong roll curve. So, normal po ang operation. So, ano naman po yung expect po natin by the end ng May sa uh, four major dams po natin? So, meron po tayong forecast basin rainfall na galing po sa Klimps. For Angat po, ang um, forecast uh, basin rainfall po ay 245.68. At ang ang mga da ang dam allocation po na nakikita niyo dito is uh, kinuha po namin sa uh, dam operator. So, yan po yung binigay nila. Yan po yung ginamit namin. And then, 
Um, by the end po ng May, for ang GAT, so expected uh, water level po niya is 192.15. So kapag ka 245.68 po yung forecast uh, basin rainfall po niya, bababa pa po yung elevation niya from uh, sa today na elevation po ng ang GAT. And to reach po yung normal high water level na 210, kailangan niya pa po na 1,054.9 uh, mm of rainfall. So for San Roque naman po, um, forecast basin rainfall is 314. And 81 uh, CMS po yung dam allocation po for San Roque. At uh, uh, nasa critical low na po siya by the end ng um, May. Kung yaan po yung uh, matatanggap or bubuhos na ulan sa uh, area po ng uh, San Roque Dam. And then to reach po yung um, normal high water level naman na 280, kailangan niya pa po ng... Um, 2,287 uh, millimeter of rainfall. So, for Pantabangan naman po, with uh, forecast basin rainfall na 264.3, um, magkakaroon po siya, or ang expect po natin na magiging elevation niya by the end ng May is 185.2. And, uh, uh, ba, um, and to reach naman po yung uh, normal high water level niya na 221, kailangan niya pa po ng 3,044 uh, 3, uh, millimeter of rainfall. So, um, mababa din po siya sa kanya pong uh, rule curve. And for Magat naman po, uh, meron po siyang forecast basin rainfall na 276. And sa current elevation niya po na 186, to reach yung uh, normal high water level niya na 193, ang kailangan niya na lang pong um, rainfall is 155. And kung ang forecast po natin ay nasa 276, greater uh, mas mataas po yung forecast dun po sa kailangan niyang um, millimeter of rainfall. Uh, expect po natin na magkakaroon po or possible po yung pag-spill po sa Magat Dam. So, yun lang po yung update po natin sa mga dams. Thank you, Ms. Aileen. So now, to review us the climate conditions from March to April, we'd like to call Mr. Uh, Juni Ru Ruiz, our weather specialist, uh, fresh from Korea. Kara kara po ni Sir Juni. So March, di ba? So Sir Juni. Magandang umaga po. Ang ipepresent ko po ngayon ay kung ano yung nangyari sa nakarang buwan ng Marso at sa kasalukuyang buwan, sa mga nakalipas na araw sa kasalukuyang buwan ng Abril. So kung ano-ano po yung contents ng ng presentation na to, una, Kung ano na po yung nangyayari sa tinatawag natin, El Nino, uh, Southern Oscillation. So dito po natin malalaman kung may posibilidad ba ng El Nino or La Nina. Or kung meron bang El Nino or La Nina. Pangalawa, weather systems. Kung ano-ano yung mga sistema ng panahon na nakaka-apekto sa bansa natin. Pangatlo, kung ano yung uh, nangyari or ano yung naidulot ng pagbabago ng panahon sa ating dami ng ulan or temperatura at kung nagkaroon po ba tayo ng mga bagyo sa mga nakalipas na buwan. At pang-apat yung summary. So una, titingnan po muna natin kung ano yung nangyayari na doon sa tinatawag natin and so. Or dito po, sa nakikita yung box, ito po yung tinatawag na uh, Eastern and Central and Eastern Equatorial Pacific. At uh, ito po, dito po natin nalalaman kung lumalamig ba or uh, umiinip yung temperatura ng karagatan. So bakit po dito banda? Kasi nasa Pasipiko po yung pinakamalalim na bahagi ng dagat. At kung may pagbabago man, kahit konti lang sa temperature, malaki na po yung epekto. Hindi lang po sa nakapalibot ng mga bansa, kundi sa buong mundo. So, kung makikita po natin, ito po yung 4-month surface temperature animation. 
So kung makikita natin from January hanggang March or April, may kita po natin yung pagbabago dito sa may box. Which is, from January makikita natin na medyo blue pa, which uh, characterized by laser, uh, medyo malamig po na temperatura at sa mapapansin natin, sa nakapalibot naman is pula. Meaning, mainit na temperatura. So, titingnan po natin, I mean, isusum in natin dun sa part kung saan makikita natin kung gaano tumaas o bumaba yung temperatura sa may bahagi ng dagat na to. So, ito po yung tinatawag natin na formant sea surface anomaly. So, mapapansin natin from January hanggang April yung pagbabago. So, from blue, naging light blue hanggang naging white. So, makikita natin yung indication na yung nakaka-apekto na lang sa atin ay unti-unti nang humihina at base nga po sa mga forecast or sa mga output ng models galing sa NOAA or yung uh, weather agency sa Amerika, asahan po natin yung pag pagbabalik sa neutral condition in the month of April or May. So ito lang po yung uh, ito po yung possible indication na babalik na po tayo sa normal condition. Then, ito po yung weekly sea surface temperature anomaly. So dito po natin makikita yung pagbabago ng anomaly. Minsan papataas, minsan papababa, at yung green yung yun yung neutral. So kung ano man yung temperature if tumaas siya, which is above the threshold na 0.5, nagkakaroon po tayo ng El Nino, pero it doesn't mean na kung tumaas siya ng 1 month or 2 months or 3 months, may El Nino na po tayo. Kailangan natin ng 5 consecutive 3 months na naglalap to have an El Nino event. So sa nakikita naman po natin, sa kasalukuyan, dito po tayo nag-start sa may bandang October. So nakikita natin, mababa po talaga yung ito anomaly from the normal which is itong green which is an indication of an ongoing na ninya pero nakikita natin na hindi naman siya masyadong bumaba kaya tinatawag natin siyang weak la ninya but the more than that uh, the intensity po is pwedeng magbago it could be moderate or strong at As uh, the week progresses up to now, may kita natin yung trend na papataas na siya. Which is an indication na babalik na po sa neutral condition yung temperature. So bakit po ninyo 3.4 yung laging monitor at tinitingnan? Dito po kasi na part, dito po malakas yung relationship between sea surface temperature at kung ano yung nangyayari sa atmosphere o yung depth pressure, hangin, or precipitation. So dito po malakas yung relationship. Kaya mas monitor po yung ninyo 3.4. At makikita naman po natin dito, SOI, which uh, corresponds to Southern Oscillation Index. So ito po yung pagbabago sa pressure between Tahiti and Darwin. Tahiti po is nasa island po siya, malapit sa US, and Darwin is nasa Australia. So, in between po sa kanila, andun po yung tinatawag natin Nino Region or yung pinakakabuhan ng karagatang Pasipiko. Kaya, may kita po natin is kinoconsider po din nila na indicator ang SOI. Which uh, corresponds also na kung papataas po siya yung trend from the neutral, is an indication po ng the Nino. Habang pababa, is an indication po ng El Nino. So may kita natin inversely proportional yung relationship ni sea surface temperature at ni SOI or yung pressure. So habang papataas, uh, lumalakas din po yung indication ng laninya. Pero sa nakikita nating trend, sa kasalukuyan is pababa na siya. Going back to neutral levels. Then, probabilistic and so for outlook. So ang latest po is early April. Ito po yung mga output ng models which corresponds kung gaano kalaki yung prob probability if magkakaroon ba tayo ng laninya or magpapatulay ba yung laninya which corresponds sa color blue. Then neutral corresponds sa color gray and 
red, which corresponds to color, ay, which corresponds to El Nino. So, sa nakikita po nila, based sa previous output po ng models, is malaki po talaga yung uh, probability na mag-neutral na tayo in the coming months. But since uh, may, tumataas din po yung probability ng pula, hindi po, hindi po nila nire-roll out na posible magkaroon ng na ninya, but hindi po sa taong ito, but in the coming year. But, uh, ay, El Nino po, itong pula, sir. El Nino. Pero, uh, tuwing ano po din kasi, ini-indicate din nila na tuwing spring, so ito pong spring ay March up to May, malaki po yung uh, error sa mga forecast. Yan po yung tawag sa... Uh, tawag po nila forecast barrier. So, hindi po nila masyadong inaano pa na posibleng magkayang ninyo. Kasi malaki nga yung error. But, basically, in the coming months, June, July, or August, uh, doon po natin malalaman kung malaki ba yung probability na magkaroon tayo ng El Nino next year. So, hindi pa po ngayon. So, sa ngayon, let's consider that we will be going back to neutral condition in the coming months. Sa ngayon, po, uh, sa ngayon po, sa buwan ng Abril, nasa La Nina Advisory number no. 5 pa po tayo. Which uh, signifies that there is still a uh, persisting La Nina condition sa Tropical Pacific. So baka posible po, malalaman natin sa presentation ni Ma'am Ana sa Outlook kung ano pa yung probability ng papatuloy ng La Nina or mawawala na ba siya yung the next coming months. So, uh, based in po dito, nag-issue tayo ng La Nina Advisory number no. 5 noong April 5 as indication po na meron pa ding El Nina ay meron pa ding La Nina for this month or during this month. Then, ito po yung uh, parang lemonize na advisory natin. So, ano-ano po ba yung mga weather systems na naka sa atin sa buwan ng Marso hanggang April 25. Sa so April 25 pa po tayo kasi hindi pa tapos yung Abril. Unang-una, Northeast Monsoon, sa buwan po to ng March. Then tail end of cold front. Sa ngayon po, sa buwan ng March hanggang May, posible pa po mag-dominate yung estuaries, which is an indication of a transition between uh, Amihan and Habagat, or Northeast Monsoon and Southwest Monsoon. Then, localized thunderstorm dahil nga po sa mainit na temperatura sa maan pa ng estrelis na mainit na hangin nagkakaroon po tayo ng localized thunderstorm kaya tawag po siyang localized kasi hindi siya malakihan so meaning po niyan pwede siya mangyari sa isang barangay isang municipality pati hindi po sa buong province so napapansin po natin pwedeng umulan dito sa dito lang po banda sa Quezon City pero hindi sa ibang So that, ng Metro Manila. So, yun po yung localized thunderstorm. So, uh, ito po, ang susunod ay intertropical convergence zone na nakaka-apekto po sa gawing Mindanao. So, kaya po marami silang pagulan ngayon. Low pressure areas is uh, the possibi possibility of low pressure area is embedded po siya sa ITC same. So, pwede po siyang doon manggaling. Then, ratio of high pressure area, it means uh, maliwana or mainit na panahon. Wala po tayong kaulapan or uh, mga LPAs. Then, the last one is tropical cyclone. So, sa tropical cyclone naman po, nagkaroon tayo ng isa, which is noong March, tropical storm kaloy. Noong March 27. But sa April, which is workers to have 0 or 1, wala pa po. At wala din pong possibility na magkaroon base po sa weather forecast sa ninyo. Then, uh, na, nang bu etong buwan na to, nag-declare po tayo ng termination din po ng Northeast Monsoon, noong April 10, which uh, signifies na mahina or pawala na po yung Northeast Monsoon. And dominated na po tayo ng Estrelis. Then, ito po si Tropical Storm Kaloy. So, nakikita po natin, hindi po siya talaga 
uh, directly naka-apekto sa Pilipinas. And dito lang po siya sa may bandang par, which is nag-stay siya ng 12 hours from 8 a.m. ng 27 hanggang 8 p.m. ng 27 ng March. So, karaniwan po talaga ang tropical cyclone track ng March is pwede mag-recurve or mag maka-apekto siya sa uh, along Visayas. So, ang pinalo niya pang uh, climatological track is yung paricor po. So, which is ito po yung nangyari. At wala din po siyang direct association sa pagkakaroon ng rainfall sa anumang bahagi ng bansa natin. So, ito po si Tropical Cyclone. Ay, Tropical Storm sa Kaloy. Sa April din po, kung ito po yung normal tracks. Pero, Uh, sa ngayon, wala naman tayo na mamataang pwede maging bagyo. Pero karaniwan kung April, which is uh, uh, hindi po ganun kadami talaga yung chances, o kalaki yung chances na magkakaroon, ito po yung possible track niya, kung sakali. Dane rainfall assessment, nagkaroon po ba tayo na mas maraming ulan or mas konting ulan sa buwan ng Marso or sa kasalukuyang buwan? hanggang uh, April 25. So dito man, natin malalaman yung percentage. Hindi po yung actual rainfall, kundi yung percentage base sa kulay. So nahati po siya sa apat, which is 40, 0 or 40, way below normal. Nagkaroon man po, man, nagkaroon man po ng ulan, pero hindi ganun kadami. Or parang konting-konti lang talaga siya. So below normal, nagkaroon ng ulan, pero hindi siya sapat na patawag natin na normal. At new normal, which is the range na mako-compare natin siya sa 30-year rainfall natin. Then above normal is mas madami kaysa karaniwan for that particular month. Then sa buwan po ng Marso, may kita natin itong bandang southern Luzon saka central Luzon. Western Visayas, central Visayas saka uh, eastern Visayas. Sa Mindanao po, way below normal. May kita natin dito, iba yung kulay blue saka green, which signifies, dito din po, near normal rainfall. Which is uh, the possible effect po ng, or ito po yung naging epekto ng surge ng tail end of the fall front for the month of March. Saka localized standard storm dito sa bahagin to. At sa March po, papansin natin, tuyong-tuyo si Mindanao kasi wala pa, wala pa po yung ITCC sa buwan na to. And dito po sa may Northern Luzon, aside lang po dito, mahina na po kasi si Northeast Monsoon. So hindi po siya nakapag-contribute na madaming ulan dito, aside lang po sa portion na to. So si ano po, Amihan. So kung ano na... Uh, titingnan po natin yung summary sa March 2018. Below to way below normal rainfall conditions po ang natanggap ng uh, kap, dito po sa may bandang sa may bandang car below to way below normal region 1 sa region 2. Then, sa may bandang Central Luzon po, mostly nakatanggap naman ng near to above normal rainfall aside from Nueva Ecija sa Aurora, which is nasa loob po yung, nasa central part po yung Nueva Ecija. Sa Aurora is mostly affected by uh, Northeast Monsoon, pero humina nga po, kaya medyo konti na lang yung ulan na natanggap niya. Metro Manila, papalitan na lang po yung asenso. Ah, nakatanggap po siya ng mas maraming ulan na dulot ni uh, localized thunderstorm saka uh, yung surge po ng tail end of the cold front. Calabarzon, uh, lahat po siya nakatanggap ng near to above normal rainfall. Memaropa, nakatanggap po ng near to above normal rainfall Uh, aside from Palawan, which is nasa pinaka-western part na po ng bansa natin. Sa Region 5, Bicol, halos lahat po ng provinces is near to normal, but aside from Albay, sa Kakamarini Sur, which is nasa may uh, lower portion po ng southern Luzon. 
Then sa province po ng Western Visayas, uh, ito po, halos lahat ng provinces nakatanggap naman po ng mas madaming ulan except from Negros Occidental na sa western part po ng bansa natin. Region 7 or Central Visayas, nakatanggap po lahat ng provinces except for Negros Oriental kasi andito po siya. Then, sa Eastern Visayas, lahat po is near to above normal rainfall po yung natanggap ng mga provinces. Sa Buanga Peninsula and the rest of Mindanao, except for Camigin, way below to below normal po yung natanggap. Kasi nga po, wala namang weather system na naka-apekto doon for the month of March. So ito naman po yung actual rainfall ng April 1 to 5. So mapapansin po natin yung normal rainfall. At makikita natin based po dito sa region na tuwing April, maliit lang po talaga yung threshold level. Which is nasa may bandang ano lang, 300 mm. Yung ano po, pinaka-normal natin. So kung mapapansin natin, sa actual, may mga ano talaga, portion sa provinces po na nagkaroon ng uh, 200, 1 to 300. At i-convert po natin siya sa percentage, ito po yung nangyayari sa mapa natin. Dahil ma medyo mababa po yung threshold pag April, madami talagang lugar yung not near to above normal rainfall. Aside from, uh, dito po sa may bandang Cordillera, Northern Luzon, dito, sa, dito po sa may bandang part ng Memaropa, Western Visayas, saka dito po sa may bandang Misamis Oriental at Pupito. So kung i-contextualize po natin, uh, pero hindi pa po, yung hindi pa po ito yung final, hanggang 25 lang po ng April. So, uh, Based po sa recent data ng rainfall, near to above normal rainfall po sa may bandang uh, So dito na po tayo tumingin. Uh, near to above normal rainfall po sa may bandang uh, Central Luzon, except for Bataan, Bulacan, Calabarzon, uh, yung Quezon ng Pobanda. Sa may bandang Bicol, Visayas at Mindanao, aside from Western Visayas, near to above normal rainfall po yung natanggap. Or mas madami kaysa normal threshold. Which is an indication po na yung mga pagulan na to is an, uh, posibleng dulot ng ongoing ITCSA sa may southern part dito po banda at Uh, localized thunderstorm. So sa temperature assessment naman po sa, may ban uh, sa buwan ng March, mapapansin po natin sa minimum, eto po, mas marami yung areas na nagkaroon po ng mas mainit na gabi. Or yung minimum po kasi is na ano natin, from uh, six. So nasa mga ano po, 4 to 6 or 7 a.m. So, mas mainit po yung mostly sa almost all parts po ng bansa natin except for some areas in Visayas saka eto po sa Baguio at sa Buanga. Sa maximum temperature naman po, medyo malamig kaysa kasalukuyan kasi nga po, sa minsan-minsan may surge si uh, Tilan of the Cold Front at saka si Lortis Monsoon. So, sa may bandang Visayas saka Luzon po is medyo slightly below normal. Aside from Mindanao, na hindi po talaga naka, hindi apektado ng NA weather system sa buwan ng March. So, painit po yung sa Mindanao. Then, sa mean temperature, overall, uh, masabi natin walang pagbabago or medyo mas malamig sa normal yung temperature natin sa buwan ng March. So, ito lang po yung Uh, parang graph ng anomaly ng temperature which signifies na mas marami tayong naging mas mainit na gabi. Uh, ito po pala sa, Mar uh, sa April na. Hindi pa po siya namamapa kasi hindi pa tapos yung April. So kung makikita natin, by April, mas mainit pa din po yung minimum temperature natin in which 
mostly halos lahat ng station natin has na nag-indicate po ng mas mataas na temperature tuwing gabi. While sa maximum po is kukonti lang po yung mga stations na nagkaroon ng maximum temperature from April 1 to 25. At for the maximum temperature po, from April 1 to 25, pinakahayas po is si QB point, which is nasa Olonga po, then sumunod po si Tugigaraw, Dagupan, Cotabato. Ito po yung yung mga stations na po na to ay along the western part po ng Pilipinas. So sila po yung nagtala ng mataas na temperatura at makikita natin kung ano yung mga dates. So nag-iiba-iba po yung dates. Kung, uh, kung kailan sila naging mas mainit. Ito lang po yung mean temperature. So kung titingnan natin, halos hindi naman ganun kalaki yung pagbabago. Aside from eto po dito sa may malay-balay. So, medyo mas mainit po doon sa buwan na to. So, for the month of March po, ito lang po yung summary. Kutabato City po yung naging pinakamainit. Well, ang pinakamalami po is Baguio. Nung buwan na po ng March din, nabit po ng Berak Sign of Catanduanes. Yung highest recorded T-Max po niya. Nung uh, March 29, which is Supposedly, pinaka oldest record niya is 31 degrees Celsius noong 1986, but naging 3128. So, tumaas po siya ng 28 degrees Celsius from the ano po, pinakamataas niya. So, naging mas mainit po yung Marso doon sa may bandang uh, sa may, sa may Katanduanes compared po sa mga nakaraang uh, taon. Then for the month of April naman po, pinakamataas si QB point. Which is register po siya ng 39.2 at pinakamalamig pa din si Baguio. At nung time na yun din po, uh, nasurpass ni QB point, which is nasa Olonga po, yung highest record niya, which is in 2010. Na 38.2. Sa ngayon po, 38, uh, 39.2 yung pinakahighest niya. For the, ano naman po, uh, Manila, hindi naman po niya nabit, pero mataas yung temperature niya, nasa 36.0, at mapapansin natin, mainit sa pakiramdam, or mainit po talaga sa Manila, especially ngayong April. So, sa ano po, global temperature naman, which, uh, ito po yung assessment noong March 2018, So, sa taon daw po na to, yung January to March average, ito po yung pin, uh, ika-anim na highest simula noong 1880 hanggang 2010. So, 139 year period, naging 6 po siya sa pinakamainit. Which is, ang itinaas po niya ay nasa 0.43 degrees Celsius. Compare po doon sa 2016, which is yung pinakamainit po talaga natin na period from January to March. Then in summary po, La Nina still persists in the tropical Pacific with uh, sea surface temperature still below threshold values. One tropical cyclone entered the Philippine area of responsibility in 2018, which is a tropical storm Kaloy. Then generally near to slightly warmer than average temperatures were observed in most parts of the country. Then, ito po yung summary, summary ng rainfall assessment. So, overall for March, uh, near to above normal rainfall conditions in most parts of central and southern Luzon. Extreme northern Luzon and Visayas. Uh, below to way below normal naman po sa areas ng northern Luzon, ito po banda, and Cordillera region at sa Mindanao. For April 1 to 25, near to above normal rainfall condition in most parts of Central Luzon and Southern Luzon. Eastern, Central, Eastern and Central Visayas and most parts of Mindanao. And way below to way below normal rainfall in most areas of Northern Luzon, Cordillera region and some parts of Western Visayas and parts of Northern Mindanao. So, salamat. Ito na po yung...
Thank you, Junie, for the detailed information. Okay. So, na paliwanag na mabuti ni Junie kung ano nangyari noong March and April. So, sa ngayon, uh, sasagutin naman ni Miss Anna kung ano mayayari in the next six months. So, we would like to call Miss Annalisa Solis, our OIC from CLIMPS, to give us the climate outlook for May to October. Miss Anna? Thank you very much, Lucy. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. So, May to October po. So, welcome back po from 100 Climate Outlook Forum natin. Ano po? So, ENSO updates and outlook. May to October, climate outlook in terms of rainfall, temperature, dry days, tropical cyclone frequency, extremes, and then summary po. So, ito po yung recent sea surface temperature evolution at the tropical Pacific during the past 10 weeks. So, makikita po natin na meron na po tayong continuous na nagkakaroon na ng warming dito po sa Central at Eastern Equatorial Pacific. Although meron nagkaroon ng slight cooling na bigla, nag-burst nung March, but still nagdederederetyo na po siyang painit ng painit ang sea surface temperature na kung saan uh, pawala na po yung tinatawag na signal ng La Nina. So meaning, papunta na po siya sa towards and so neutral condition. So based po dun sa mga international prediction centers as of 19 April from CPCIRI, La Nina is expected to transition to ENSO neutral during April-May kasi uh, actually last po eh, March, April, May yan sinabi natin. So April-May kasi nagkaroon nga po ng slight burst ng cooling dun sa Central Pacific pa po. But still, and uh, after po nung one week, week na burst na yon, uh, nagtuloy-tuloy na rin pong uminit uli. Uh, April, May with ENSO neutral then likely greater than 50% chance, so greater than 50% to continue through Northern Hemisphere summer, so June, July, August uh, uh, 2018 season. ENSO alert status nila is still La Nina advisory, so meron pa rin po silang La Nina advisory initiated last April 12. Basi po sa BOM, so actually last week pa, uh, last month pa po, sinabi nila na ENSO neutral conditions na siya, and it is expected to remain neutral in Southern Hemisphere winter. So, ibig sabihin po, June, July, August, Northern Hemisphere summer natin yon. And ENSO alert system nila status is inactive dahil iba po yung threshold value na sinasabi ng uh, BOM, yung plus 7 at minus 7, um, plus 0.7 at minus 0.7, yung threshold value nila in terms of sea surface temperature anomaly. Dito naman po sa Tokyo Climate Center na kung saan yung Nino 3 region yung kanyang tinitingnan, it is considered that La Nina conditions continue in the Equatorial Pacific, so still may remnants pa rin po ng La Nina, but it is likely that La Nina conditions will end in March, April, May, around 70% probability, and ENSO neutral conditions are likely during June, July, August, uh, 2018, so boreal summer, 70% then yung kanilang uh, probability. Sa so, Ipit Climate Center, uh, updated 25 April, ENSO neutral pace, and May, June, July, August, 20, May, June, July 2018, suggests below normal rainfall over the central and eastern equatorial Pacific, and above normal rainfall over the off equatorial belt of the North Pacific, suggests so, above the equatorial Pacific, and above normal rainfall over the off equatorial belt, ay teka, August, September, October po, 2018, below and near normal rainfall over the central off equatorial South Pacific and central equatorial Pacific. So yun yung mga term nila, off, off. <laughs> okay. Based po naman sa WMO, in which uh, ina-update po nila quarterly, ay actually, uh, ano na to, March na po to, updated na po to March, SSTs in the East Central Tropical Pacific Ocean remain at weak La Nina levels, while most atmospheric indicators are now consistent with an imminent decay of the La Nina event. So most climate models indicate transition from La Nina to ENSO neutral conditions is likely early in the second quarter of 2018, so May, June, July uh, season. 
So, based from uh, lahat po ng mga nakalap natin information from international prediction centers, Pagasa came up with the general statement, transition from La Nina to Enso Neutral is likely during April, May 2018, and then Enso Neutral onwards. So, ito po yung pinakita kanina ni Ms. Juni, and eh, is Mr. Juni. So, ito po yung official probabilistic ENSO forecast issued by CPC IRI uh, uh, 12 April. So, ito naman po yung updated nila 19 April. So, ito pong graph nito is based on a consensus of CPC and IRI forecasters. So, ang ginamit po nila dito is based on observed, recent observational data and it also uses human judgment in addition to model output. So, yung ina-update naman po nila every third Wednesday of each month ay purely objective and so probability forecast. So, equal equal weighting ang ginagawa po nila sa lahat ng mga models nila to come up with probabilistic and so forecast, pero purely objective. Wala po siyang human judgment. So, wala silang ginagamit na expert judgment. So, base po dito sa official forecast nila, so still, uh, mas mataas yung chances of May, June, July, May, um, ano, March, April, May pa na. March, April, May, so ENSO neutral condition, more than 50% probability. And then makikita po natin starting April, May, June hanggang dito po, September, October, November, ay higher probability of having ENSO neutral conditions. And then meron tayo nakikitang slight warming or, or El Nino uh, condition. Also based din dito sa purely objective ENSO probability forecast. Although may nakikita yung slight trend sa warming or magkakaroon ng El Nino, still napakataas po ng uncertainty because lahat po ng forecast made during March, April, May, so ito yung ginasinasabi natin predictability barrier na kung saan wala pong napaka, walang coupling na nangyayari dun sa ocean and atmosphere natin dahil well mixed po yung ating ocean ngayon dahil ito po yung tinatawag na in-transition. So mas malaki yung tinatawag na signal-to-noise ratio puro noise ang nakikita ng mga model dahil hindi po hindi po nagkukupling yung ating ocean and atmosphere. So, ibig sabihin, wala tayong nakikitang clear and so signal whether siya ay mangyayari magkaka-El Nino or hindi. So, still, napakataas po na uncertainty kung magkakaroon tayo ng El Nino towards end of the year. So, wag po muna tayo mag-prepare ng El Nino towards end of the year. So, hindi pa rin po. Although, yung, lalo na po yung ating agri sector, alam po namin during the months of May and June, yung kanilang quarterly planning, so, necessarily, kailangan uh, i-consider po itong mga uncertainty nito na mga to. So, dito po, makikita po yung uh, average na probabilistic, uh, uh, prob uh, well, uh, average sea surface temperature anomaly forecast based from dynamical and statistical uh, models. So, makikita po natin yung red, ay yung po yung average ng dynamical models, and then blue, yung po yung sa, uh, CPC consolidated uh, and consensus forecast po based on both the average of dynamical and statistical models which is in red. So ano po nakikita natin sila? Merong mga konting warming trend but still highly uncertain po tayo dito. Pag-asa and solar system is still a Nina advisory so nagkaroon nga po kasi ng bursting during the months of March, kaya hindi pa po siya nagtuloy-tuloy na, na maging ENSO neutral to, uh, starting March, April, May. Kaya makita natin, April, May, posibleng pong magkaroon na tayo ng ENSO neutral condition. And La Nina is weakening in the tropical Pacific and return to ENSO neutral March, April, May season. Weather systems that, affect the, that might affect the country during the period. So, andyan po yung transition from northeast to southwest monsoon. Easterlies, Southwest Monsoon, Local Thunderstorm, Intertropical Convergence Zone, Low Pressure Areas, Ridge of High Pressure Area, and Tropical Cyclone. So, lahat po siya still rain-bearing tropic uh, weather systems except for Ridge of High Pressure Area. All, although, itong Easterlies ay nagpapaulan, pero ito din po ay nagbibigay din po ng pag-init sa atin. Definition of terms, so simplified uh, definition of terms na po siya. Outlook for May to October 2018. So, alam na po natin yung mga rainfall maps natin. So, way below normal, pula. Below normal, yellow. Near normal, green. And then, above normal, ay 
blue. Greater than 120%. So, based po dito sa forecast natin, so makikita po natin na, na dalawa lang ang kulay ng ating mapa. So, dyan po ipinapakita natin na napakataas po ng uncertainty ng ating mga forecast. Uh, kapag mga dalawang kulay lang po yung nakikita. Lalong-lalo na po kung isang kulay lang. Kasi ibig sabihin yung model, simply climatology lang po yung pinapakita niya. So based po dito sa forecast na ito, sa so near to above normal rainfall condition over most areas of the country, so lalong-lalo na po dito sa may part po ng central and southern Luzon and also including central portions of Visayas. While generally near normal po sa may northern Luzon and part of Mindanao area. Pagdating po ng June, so medyo nagkaroon ng konting ibang kulay, naging tatlo, so medyo mas better yung skill na forecast made in June. So may nakuha tayong konting signal. So generally near to above normal rainfall condition with some patches of below normal rainfall condition sa may extreme northern Luzon area. So around 49 provinces might experience near normal rainfall condition Two provinces below normal, dito po sa may part ng Cagayan and part of Ilocos and Batanes area. And then above normal rainfall condition, around 28 provinces, mostly from the Visayas, Southern Luzon area. Pagdating po ng July, so eto yung nakikita natin medyo mas marami yung ulan natin, lalong-lalo na po yung mga areas sa may western section ng Luzon. But then, slightly near normal to way below, to below normal rainfall condition over the general portions of Visayas and Mindanao. So, medyo mas maulan po dito pagdating ng July, dito po sa may western section ng Luzon. And around 15 provinces might experience above normal rainfall condition pagdating po ng July. Pagdating po ng August, so kung titingnan po natin yung normal rainfall po natin during the months of August, Mas marami yung ulan na natatanggap ng general western sections ng bansa, lalong-lalo na po sa western section ng Luzon, mga around more than 600 millimeters of rain. Ito po yung forecast rainfall during the months of August. So generally, madami din pong ulan. In terms of percent normal, generally near, below to near normal rainfall condition over most parts of Luzon. Pero meron tayong nakikitang below, way below normal dito sa may parts po ng ng Angat Dam, Central Luzon, uh, sa may parts po ng Bulacan, including portions of Northern Manila. And then, uh, above normal rainfall sa general portions po ng Visayas, including Northern Mindanao. And then, ito po, below to way below normal rainfall condition. So, around 34 provinces might experience above normal rainfall condition, mostly coming in from Visayas, Northern Mindanao, and part of uh, Southern Luzon area and Mimaropa area. Pagdating po ng September, so generally near normal rainfall condition, although meron po tayo mga areas na is slightly na below normal rainfall dito lang po sa may portions po ng, ng Leyte, Southern Leyte, at saka po dito sa may eastern part po ng Mindanao. So around 73 provinces, so uh, generally near normal rainfall condition. So meaning near normal rainfall condition during the months of September, eto pa rin yung karaming ulan na matatanggap ng mga areas so, since yung near nor yung near average rainfall natin during the months of September ay meron pa rin po tayo from 101 millimeters up to 600 millimeters of rain so kahit near normal siya still madami pa rin po pag-uulan pagdating po ng September Pagdating po ng October although nakita natin na mas medyo maulan na dito po sa eastern section ng ating bansa Based on forecast din po, maulan na rin dito sa eastern section ng bansa and in general, near normal sa major portions ng ating bansa and some patches of below normal dito sa western Luzon area. So around 18 provinces might experience below normal rainfall dito po sa may part ng Luzon area including Mindoro. So ito po yung tabular representation po ng ating mga maps in percent normal, and then ito po in terms of millimeters of rain. Ayan. Sa mga watershed po natin, ay, tika. Ay. Parang hindi ito yung, yung ating, ano, 
Ah, sige po. Ah. So, kasi uh, chinek po natin, so generally, actually, dito po sa anggat ay eh, hindi po siya 0%. So, 32% po to below normal rainfall condition. So, 32% po iniran natin. So, nagkaroon lang po. I-correct na lang po namin yung isang presentation siguro yung na-update. Okay. So, generally, near to above normal rainfall condition during the months of May, June, July, And then pagdating po ng August, September, October, most of our watershed rainfall do sa selected dams and lakes natin ay generally near normal rainfall condition. So pagdating po ng May, June, July, so dyan po medyo mauulan dun sa mga watershed areas natin based po dun sa forecast natin. Pagdating po ng, sa mga rain stations natin, sa mga selected dam area, ibig sabihin po sa mga rain stations, sa mga point data natin, dito sa mga rain stations natin ito, so generally near to above normal rainfall condition during May, June, July, dun sa lahat po halos ng ating rain stations over selected dam areas. Pagdating naman po ng August, so meron pong mga below normal to way below normal rainfall condition and generally, near normal rainfall conditions. And then pagdating po ng September at October, so generally near normal, pagdating po ng October ay below normal rainfall condition doon po sa mga selected na mga drain stations natin, lalo, lalo na po dito sa may part ng Luzon area. Lahat pala, Luzon. Okay. Sa ating mga river basins, So, forecast rainfall over selected river basins from May, June, July. So, generally near to above normal rainfall except dito po sa may nakita nating ambulog river basin. But still, malapit na rin po siyang near normal although below normal rainfall condition. Pero uh, may ulan pa rin po ng around uh, 170 millimeters of rain dito po sa may mga river basins natin dito including portions of Mindanao River Basin. So generally near normal. But then pagdating po ng July, so yung Agusan and Buayan, Malu Malungon River Basin, so below normal, including Tagum Libuganon River Basins in Mindanao. August, September, October, so generally uh, makita natin na below to near normal rainfall condition during the months of August sa mga selected river basins natin. And the rest, September, October, generally below to near normal rainfall condition doon po sa ating mga river basins sa, sa Luzon at Mindanao. Wala pa po tayong river basin sa Visayas. In terms of dry days, araw na walang ulan or less than 1 mm of rain ang kanyang matatanggap. So mostly, marami, pagdating po ng May, Uh, medyo madami na po yung mga ulan natin, mga araw na may ulan kasi mas kukunti na po yung tinatawag nating dry days. Kasi po yung, yung mas brown yung shade, mas maraming dry days. Pero yung pong mga green na to, to dark green shades up to blue shades, yun na po yung ibig sabihin na kumukunti na yung dry days. So meaning dumadami na po yung mga araw na may ulan pagsapit po ng May. June, July. Although dito po sa July, nakikita natin na meron pa rin pong mga kokonte yung araw na walang ulan dito po sa may parts ng Visayas at Mindanao. But then dito po, marami na po tayong pag-uulan. So less number of dry days, mas marami ang wet days, ibig sabihin dito po sa may part po ng Luzon area, particularly western Luzon area. Pagdating po ng August, September, October, so nakita po natin na marami pa rin po yung araw na may ulan. So ito po yung kokon, madami yung dry days. Minsan nakakalito. <laughs> Opo. So basta yung mga shades po na green up to dark green or blue shades, yun po yung mas kokonte ang dry days. So meaning, mas madami po yung araw na may ulan. So ganun din po dito pagdating ng September, Pagdating ng October, makita po natin, mapansin natin, ang Western Luzon area, including portions of Northern Mindanao and Eastern Mindanao, ay madami po siyang dry days. So, mag-start na po siya ng, 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 ng maging dry o kokonte yung bilang ng araw na walang ulan dito po pagdating ng October sa Western Luzon area. So, ito po yung table niya, number of dry days. So, 15 to 20, so yan po the dry days.
So, in general, ito po yung magiging rainfall forecast natin during the forecast period from May to October. So, generally, near to above normal rainfall conditions over most parts of Luzon and Visayas area and also parts of Luzon area pagdating ng July. Pagdating naman po ng August, so medyo dito po maulan sa may southern Luzon including Visayas area and then the rest po September to October, generally below to near normal rainfall condition pagdating ng September, October, although marami pa rin pong ulan dito. In terms of temperature forecast, so medyo may mga slightly warmer to warmer than average, mostly dito po sa may parts ng Central Luzon area, sa may part po ng, Basa, ng Subic, Tarlac, Bas Batanes, Iba area. So ito po yung mga lugar na medyo maiinit. Actually, nakaka-record po sila ng medyo maiinit na temperatura hanggang sa ngayon. And then the rest po ay generally near average po ang kanyang temperature. Pagdating po ng June, so meron pa rin pong lugar na medyo slightly warmer to warmer than average yung kanyang temperature. And the rest po, yung nakikita nating plain lang na below na puti, ay generally po ay near average yung kanyang temperature in terms of mean temperature. Pagdating po ng July, so generally near average with some slightly warmer than average still dito po maobserbahan sa may part po ng Luzon area including Metro Manila dito. And then dito rin po sa may August, September, October, so generally po near average temperature forecast po yung nakikita natin dahil mas marami pong mga bilog na plain, walang pula, walang blue. But still, meron pa rin pong slightly warmer than average dito po sa most parts of Luzon area, including Bicol area. Dito rin po. Although sa Visayas, may nakikita nating mga slightly cooler than average during the forecast period. Sa may Visayas. In terms of temperature extremes, so northern Luzon, lowland Luzon, Mountainous Luzon, Metro Manila, Lowland Visayas, Lowland Mindanao, and Mountainous Mindanao. So, ito po yung forecast temperature range natin ng maximum temperature. So, mga instantaneous values po. Not necessarily siya yung uh, average value na maximum temperature. So, so, northern Luzon, they could get as high as 31.8 to 39.6 degrees. Uh, sa pagdating po ng May. So actually po, medyo mas mainit po tayo kapag May kaysa April. Mas marami po tayong nare-record na maiinit na temperatura kapag May. So still, the, the worst is yet to come. So sa May po, eh, medyo mas maiinit pa po yung temperature natin. So ito naman po yung nighttime temperature, mean temper uh, minimum temperature po dun sa mga selected areas natin. So, dahil po dyan sa posible nating ma uh, experience na mga pag-init o yung mga uh, matataas yung heat index. So, ito po yung ating mga payo or babala. So, yung heat stroke natin. So, tandaan po natin yung mga symptoms kapag magkakaroon tayo ng, ng heat, stre uh, heat stress, heat stroke, or heat exhaustion. So, kung ito po yung isa sa mga symptoms, eh better po ay i-prevent na natin ito. So, rapid heart, heartbeat, uh, vomiting, cramps, no sweating, dizziness, unconsciousness. So, yan po yung mga early symptoms po. So, paano natin ma-prevent? So, syempre po, no alcohol daw. Konti lang po yung inumin natin na alcohol kasi mas mabilis daw po tayo ma-dehydrate kapag iinom tayo ng alcohol sa panahon ng tag-init. So, don't wear thick clothes. So, yung mga light clothes lang at mga maliliwanag na kulay. Limit outdoor time. Pero kung gusto mo talaga magpaitim at magpa-sunblock, ano, mag-wear na lang po ng sunblock protection at sunshade. Ayun. Tapos, drink a lot of water. So, kung kaya po natin yung 8 times, 8 glasses a day, so gawin natin 10 glasses a day. Ano po? And then, syempre, cool shower. Huwag ka na mag-warm shower. Opo. So, eto lang po yung mga tips natin dito sa tuwing panahon ng tag-init. So, bagyo, around 10 to 13 tropical cyclones from May to October. So, 1 or 2 May, 1 or 2 July, 2 to 4, August 2 or 3, September 2 or 3, October 2 or 3. So, ito po yung mga usual or preferred tracks po ng ating bagyo from January to 
December. So mostly dito po yung mga landfalling and crossing tropical cyclones. So pagdating po ng May, may mga nagre-record pero meron din po nag-e-enter sa ating ah, nag, nagla-landfall sa ating mga area. Mostly dito po entry niya and then sa may part po ng Luzon area and also June. Pagdating po ng July, August, September, so mostly eh, may mga nagko-cross po dito sa may part po ng Luzon area, including Visayas. And then October, November, December, eto na po, Visayas including Mindanao. So eto po yung prepared tracks ng ating bagyo from 1948 to 2016. Normal. Summary. So La Nina weekend in the tropical Pacific with likely transition to Enso neutral during March, April, May 2018 season. So still La Nina advisory. So baka po yung final La Nina advisory will be issued in May. Rainfall forecast for May to October. So May generally near to above normal rainfall condition over most parts of the country. I thank you. So dito na lang po tayo mag-summary. So generally near to above normal rainfall condition pagdating po ng May at June at May May to June. Pagdating po ng July, so near to above normal rainfall condition over most parts of Luzon area. So meron po tayong below to near normal rainfall condition sa may Visayas including Mindanao. Pagdating po ng August, so ito pong Visayas and also northern Mindanao area might experience above normal rainfall condition while the rest of the country might experience generally below to near normal rainfall condition pagdating po ng August. Pagdating ng September, so generally near normal rainfall condition with some patches of below normal dito po sa eastern section po ng Mindanao area. And then pagdating po ng October, generally near normal rainfall condition except below normal rainfall condition dito po sa may western section ng Luzon. So, inaantabayanan po natin, minomonitor po natin itong uh, weakening or decaying La Nina. So, magkakaroon po tayo ng Enso neutral condition. And base po dito sa forecast natin, eh, meron po tayong normal onset ng rainy season. Still, uh, near to above normal rainfall condition. So, based po dun sa forecast na pag-asa, if ever magkakaroon ng at least one or two tropical cyclone, it might trigger the onset of the rainy season. So, yun lang po at salamat po. May talagang pain po siya, no? Uh, thank you, Miss Anna. So, i ano na lang natin yung presentation yep. updated na yun. Okay. So now we will have our second part of the program uh, to give. Uh, I will, I will <laughs> turn over the floor to Miss Jerandran for the open forum. <laughs> 